My next guest is back in action, taking on Treston Vines. Aries Fighting Series 16 coming up here April 22nd. It is Ian Stevens joining me here on the program for the very first time. Ian, how are you? I'm good, man. How you doing? Doing awesome. Uh, look like you got a full camp for this one. When did you find out about the fight? Um, I've been out about the fight about five weeks ago, but I was trying to get a fight for a while. We had a few opponents in mind, a few people backed out, and then finally we had uh, Treston accept. So... I wasn't uh, training for a specific opponent, but, you know, I was getting the work in. And then once once he accepted, I had a, you know, face locked in, a, a name locked in. And it was it was time to go. OK, well, that's good. Sort of knew you were going to be fighting uh, hopefully around this time. Uh, take me back to the beginning here, man. How did you get involved in MMA? Uh, when I was in high school, I wrestled and um, our resource officer at the school he was involved in martial arts and, you know, in MMA. And he asked me, he just said, hey, man, would you be interested in taking a fight? And uh, I said, sure, I'll take a fight. And a couple of weeks later, I took a fight. Not much training, not much anything. And um, took two fights before I really joined the gym and trained. And then, uh, but after those first two fights, I knew it's what I wanted to do. Oh, interesting. That early. So you kind of knew early on that, hey, this is something you want to pursue. Um, when did you kind of decide that this was like more than a hobby than, than just a career? Was it, was it then? Or is, uh, you know, when, when did you sort of have that moment? Well, I knew my whole life I wanted to be something to do with athletics. You know, um, people are, you know, bred for different things, built for different things. And I never wanted to be a nine to five guy. I never wanted to wake up and, you know, not use the tools that I was blessed with. I was born with, you know, and, you know, there's intangibles that you can have, you know, that it can't be can't be taught. You know, they're given. And uh, I was given a lot of ability and I never wanted to turn my back on it. So. At a very young age, I knew I wanted to do something with athletics and with wrestling. There's not much. I spent time at the Limit Training Center, and you realize really quickly that with wrestling, there's there's not much after college. So I, I at that point, that's when I knew, you know, MMA was was for me. Along with fighting, what else do you do for a living? What, what's paying the bills for you right now? Um, I work at a logistics company. Um, it's 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 not bad at all. I mean, I, I love it. Trucking has blew up, you know, over these past few years, probably in the last 10 years. It's every year, probably one of the top growing, you know, um, uh, parts of, you know, the world right now. So that's that's what I work in and I enjoy, I enjoy it a lot. Is it pretty flexible with your training and everything or can that be challenging? Oh, no, it's 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 amazing. They um, they work with my schedule. My uh, the owner of the company and me, we um, he loves fighting. So, I mean, he's he, he's an awesome man. He's done, uh, you know, a tremendous amount for me. And the way that he allows my schedule to be flexible with training, it's 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 amazing. It's a godsend. It's something that, you know, I'm truly blessed to have. Let's talk about your opponent here. Really uh, solid uh, one uh, five and two record. What do you know about him? How do you feel like you match up against him here? Um, I mean, he's he, he's a great opponent. You know, um, I've watched uh, film on him. I've um, seen him fight live before. He's uh, I mean, he's he's good everywhere. You know, he's um, he's what you look at as an MMA fighter. You know, he doesn't rely on one single skill set. He has there's nothing that I'm going to say that he's great at. I mean, but I mean, <laughs> would you rather have one great ability or would you rather be optimal and be good at everything? And he seems to have optimized this game and he's pretty good at all assets and of the game. And I think it'll be a bit of a great fight. Training camp. I uh, actually kind of got a bit of an insight. I just talked to Torres Finney, uh, your teammate there. So it sounds like camp's going really well. Obviously he's on the card. You've got Trevor Peak. Who, who are you getting a chance to work with? Uh, aside from those names I just mentioned. Well, we got another UFC guy, Garrett Gross. You know, he uh, took a couple fights in the UFC. He's in there with us. We have multiple black belts in jujitsu and um, Trevor Peak striking coach, Jeff Powell. I mean, it's it, we have a good group in there, a good group of guys we have on the card as well as an amateur fighting for a title undefeated Josh Booker. You know, and then we have um, Richard Guerrero. He's undefeated at 4-0 as well. So we got a pretty good, pretty good group in there, man. We got Zane Burton, who's doing really well. I mean, a couple title, a couple title holders in our gym, a couple UFC guys, a bunch of black belts, brown belts. It's it's a good group to go with. Good mix by the sounds of it, a bit of everything. And what's it like being a part of like a group? Like, you know, you hear about like, you know, your American top teams, your Jackson Winks. Those have been like, you know, staple gyms for years, but you've got a lot of really good talent in your gym. What, what's it like, you know, being a part of this and potentially being one of those big gyms? Well, all those big gyms started somewhere, you know, yeah. you can look at it and you look at every champion from top to bottom. They come from different areas. They have different styles. They might all meet at top team at one point in their career, but they all come from somewhere else. And you know, a fighter doesn't change that much from the beginning where he started his roots. 
you know, once he establishes his style, he can be 20 years in the game. He's not going to be that much, that much different, you know? So it's amazing to be part of something from the ground, from the ground up. And, you know, people think that you've got to go to these big gyms to be able to, to be great. But I always say, you know, they started somewhere, you know, before George St. Pierre, you didn't hear about Canadian mixed martial arts. And then Rory McDonald come out of there. And, you know, you've had a multitude of guys coming out of Canada now. And, you know, it's it's it, it's great. It's great to be part of something from the very beginning because these guys that own a gogi and the head instructors at a gogi, when I first started mixed martial arts, they're the guys that were in the gym with me, you know, 12, 13 years ago. So it's it's amazing to see. We literally trained in the upstairs of a weightlifting gym on a very small mat. And now, you know, it's like a 10,000 square foot facility that is, you know, state of the art. It's amazing. That's awesome. Um, we got a little bit of time here, but how's the weight cut going ahead of the fight? Oh, man, it's um, it's it's been great. You know, uh, as soon as we locked in the fight, I got a nutritionist. We talked, you know, we laid out my diet. My diet has been phenomenal. I got 13 pounds off in about probably three or four weeks just off of pure eating rot. And that was, uh, and when I say eating rot, um, I've always had a good diet, but I cut back on a lot of the carbs, started eating a lot more red meat, a lot more greens and things like that. And weight just started falling off of me, man. And it just feels, you know, you say, oh, well, you know, you lose weight, you know, you're not going to be as, you know, powerful as explosive. But I feel like I've taken like a, you know, 15 pound weight vest off my back. And I just, I just feel 10 times better. It's been great. Um, your corner, who will be in the cage with you that night? Um, I've not really, you know, thought about that yet. You know, I've, okay. uh, I've, given, I've given a little bit of thought, but, um, you know, maybe, uh, Jeff Powell, uh, Rocky Quinn and, uh, Sterling Peace, maybe, um, not sure yet. We're, we'll, we're, we'll talk about that soon, but, um, we've just been locked into this camp, man. I've been so focused. I've, even when it come to like, you know, the blood work and the paperwork, that was all a little bit late for me because, you know, just every day when you train two, three times a day and you try to rest and recover in between, it's hard to, uh, to focus on anything else other than, you know, just the task at hand. How do you see this fight unfolding on April 22nd? You know, my coach has always told me we fight wherever the fight goes. Um, you envision a thousand different realities, you know, a thousand different outcomes. I mean, um, I think it'll be a good, hard, contested battle. You know, um, the guys that I train with, I don't see Treston being able to beat some of them. And, you know, the way my training is held up, you know, I feel it'll be a good competitive fight. But, you know, at the end of the day, I see my hand getting raised. And this is a big fight for you. Again, formidable opponent. This is what, you know, those bigger promotions look at, who you're fighting on the regional scene. You're fighting a seven-fight vet. And, you know, you're undefeated yourself. Um, where does a win put you in the grand scheme of things? Does it give you that, you know, big, big show call? I mean, you train with a guy in Trevor Peak, similar situation, right? Yeah, you know, you would, uh, I, you know, I hope so. You know, um, I have fought, you know, the Bell Tour World Champion, you know, I mean, and uh, had a good performance against him. And then uh, my next fight after that was not the best performance of my life. So, Hopefully, you know, we can go out here and make a statement. And that's that's the goal every fight is to make a statement. But, um, you know, hopefully I can come out there and uh, get a big win in this fight and um, propel myself forward. I mean, I would love to get the call from the big show after this fight. That would be uh, that's that's what we all work for. You know what I mean? And I feel that my career would would just be starting. Then a lot of people feel, you know, you, you make it to the UFC, you've made it. Nah, man. You know, I'm, I'm just trying to get that call so I can say it begins. That's I'm, I'm ready. I'm ready to get it started. What about downtime? I know you don't get much of it. You got the job, you're training all the time. Uh, like I said, you're dialed in for this fight. Uh, you getting in any Netflix, any video games, anything like that? Or has it just been all fight training and napping and all that stuff? I don't know. I, uh, like I said, my, uh, my work is super flexible. Um, I work on the weekends and, uh, you know, it's not, it's not, I don't work a ton of hours. It's a very laid back job. So during the week, um, I'll train three times Monday, two times Tuesday, three times Wednesday, two times Thursday, two times Friday, one time Saturday. So in between all those, you know, I have a few hours. And what I usually do is, is I'm, I'm a gamer, man. I play tons of video games. If it's yeah, anything PC game related, I'm, I'm, I'm down with it, man. What are you playing right now? Uh, League of Legends, Escape from Tarkov, the two games that I'm real, real big into right now. League okay. I, I love League of Legends, man. I played it for probably 12 years now, 12 seasons. And uh, yeah, I love it, man. I love how competitive, because I'm a, I'm a competitive person. Any yeah. game that has a real good competitive scene, um, I, I love it. And the game Escape from Tarkov, it's 
it's a super hard extraction first person shooter game and it's very competitive as well and i enjoy them. i enjoy them both right now do people online have any idea that you're a fighter like i could just imagine someone talking crap to you and then it's like do you know who you're talking to guy who's like you know really good fighter right you know, it's uh, in League of Legends, it happens a lot because League of Legends is considered like your typical like nerd game. So a lot of people, yeah. they think everybody that plays video games are some out of shape, uncompetitive, eating potato chip type person. And you got to think about it, man. These people that rise to the highest levels of these video games, you have to be ultra competitive. You have to in some way be disciplined to even be that good at a video game. You know, esports. Esports is one of the biggest growing things in the world right now. I mean, so these guys are all competitive, and it's just funny how even in the games themselves, you know, there'll be a guy who he knows himself, he's competitive spirit, he's, you know, he's a responsible person, he's disciplined because he's good at this video game, he's a very highly ranked player, but then he's calling you a fat slob because, you know, you didn't play good that game. It's like, man, you have no clue. Yeah. But yeah, no, it, it does happen often that kids will say, you know, go. The biggest phrase right now is go touch grass, nerd, because they think you play the video game all day long. And that's not that's all you do because you're good. And it's like, man, if I touch any more workouts, I, I, I wouldn't be here right now. I'd be asleep. So. Ian, thanks so much for doing this. If uh, there's anyone you want to thank, any sponsors, any social media you want to mention, I'll give you the last word. No, I want to thank uh, Johnny Jones and uh, Rocky Quinn and Go Combatives. You know, those three things right there, man, them being in my life. Um, my coach passed away. Um, I was with him for 12 years. Chet Blaylock, rest in peace. Uh, he passed away. And um, this is my first fight without him. And, uh, you know, I'm, these men have come into my life and really picked up the pieces and helped me move along. And uh, I'm ready for this next battle and a new journey. And, uh, yeah, I want to thank my coach, Chet Blaylock, for always being there for me. And then I want to thank uh, Johnny Jones for the opportunity with the job and logistics, Rocky Quinn for always being there, you know, to hold mitts, to mentor me, and to go get combatives for taking me in like I'm part of their family.